Aloha friends, it's Robert Stoic. In today's video, I'm going to give you some pointers on racing upwind and downwind, uh, wing foil racing tips, and also tips that are specific for the next weekend's race. We're planning to hold the Hawaii State Wing Foil Racing Championships right here at Kahala on August 26th of 2023, so next weekend. So if you can make it to that, this video will be super helpful, I think, for those of you who are kind of new to Kahala, or, or also if you're just, if you want to get into wing foiling in the waves, this is a great spot to get started. So I'm going to go over some details and show you the video of the training run that we did together with Derek and Eddie. So in terms of the equipment I was using that day, I was using the Blue Planet Wing Racer 58 by 21 um, an Alien Wing, Blue Planet Alien Wing 7-meter wing, and the Mike's Lab um, 600 wing with a 103-centimeter mast. So that's kind of my race setup. Um, the board I custom designed uh, for racing a little bit longer, narrower, <clears throat> for <laughs> for easy starts like having that length really helps and you know obviously the equipment is super important for wing foiling this was kind of a lighter wind day which we are also kind of expecting for the uh, race weekend so there's these pylons i'm the easiest way to get out is just to walk along the right side of the pylons um, if you go straight out from the pylons if you know if you winged straight out you would hit shallow reef so you want to avoid that and I'm going to kind of show you where to go. In this day, the tide was definitely on the high side. I think it was close to a two, two foot tide. So on a low tide, um, the water here is uh, much more shallow. And especially with a long mast, like my 103 centimeter mast, um, I definitely want to make sure the water's deep enough so I don't scratch my nice racing foil. So I'm going at the end of the pylons, a little bit to the left of the pylons. That's where it gets a little bit deeper and sandy bottom. <clears throat> and then um, jumping on my board. And, you know, like I said, the window is kind of light on the inside. So <clears throat> I'm waiting a little bit for gusts to come along. <clears throat> and while I'm waiting, I'm drifting a little bit. So paddling upwind again to make sure I'm a little bit upwind of the, the last pylon. I'm get to this um, a little bit upwind from and the then I'm just going to look on the water, search for a little gust to come along so that can get me going and so you know just looking at the water surface and looking for a patch of wind that will kind of make uh, give the water some texture here it's coming you can see a little um, gust coming so getting ready going up get on the board and then as soon as the gust hits it's easy to get up on foil so sometimes you just have to be a little bit patient and wait and then from there you want to kind of go straight out or slightly downwind you'll see a flag on the reef and that flag is marks the downwind reef so if you go to the right of that flag it also gets very shallow so if you just um, stay just left of that flag and then kind of out from the flag you want to kind of do a downwind go at a downwind angle over the reef um, there'll be some waves, so you don't want to go upwind from that flag because that's also shallow. But if you just go downwind a little bit and go past the little waves, um, there's a little bit of shallow reef there too, so you don't want to come off the foil. Good to just fly over um, those th that reef. And then once you're out kind of past the waves, then you're in deep water and you can uh, go upwind. So Kahala is a nice spot for um, getting into a wave riding on, on Oahu South Shore because there's no surfers on the water. Usually it's not a great surf spot, but there are some fun waves that, that are pretty good for wing foiling. So and it's fairly easy to get in and out. There's showers, there's parking. You don't have to walk down the hill and so on. So it's a, it's a good spot to, to get into wing foiling. And, um, and this is also where we're going to start the race. So the starting line is going to be somewhere out um, at the end of those pylons. When I'm timing myself, I just kind of, uh, once I cross the line of the pylons, basically the line that goes straight out from the pylons, that's where I start my watch going it upwind. Um, and here's Derek with the orange wing and Eddie with the gray wing. Um, we're, we're just kind of... Uh, waiting for everyone to be ready 
We're, and we're going to just do a flying start uh, and then start the timer once we cross cross that line. So we're just kind of warming up a little bit here. Uh, we're still kind of a little bit downwind of that uh, of those pylons. And uh, I think Eddie was on a 58 uh, PPC wing and then Derek's on a six meter blue planet prototype wing and I'm on the seven meter alien wing. So the seven meter alien wing is the one I also use for the Molokai race works really well for me. Um, here I'm tacking and I got the wing kind of low to my body and the harness line got hooked on the camera behind me. So the camera is mounted on my harness behind me so it got looped around there and um so after after this happened i was able to just kind of avoid um the camera by just keeping the wing a little bit higher when i'm tacking so uh that was a little bit tricky with the camera on my back um because yeah it gets in the way especially if you tack and you get the wing too low overhead but here i'm starting my watch i'm kind of the straight line out from the um, pylons. Derek was waiting for me. He saw me fall in and he's like, okay, I'm going to wait for Rob. And uh, and we're off to the doing the upwind leg. So it's about, uh, I don't know, five or six miles up to the Hawaii Kai blinker buoy. Um, and that's the course, just straight upwind to the blinker buoy, turn around and go straight back to the to Kahala. And I find um, that you know if if you're if you're pretty good at tacking um, you know obviously tacking will be more efficient going upwind so um, I would say if you if you can pull off like eight or nine out of ten tacks you're probably better off tacking if the your percentage is less than that you're probably better off jibing um, if your percentage is better on the jibes because you're just gonna um, save time not having to get back up again obviously falling is uh, gonna always be the worst thing to do and going up when i like to keep the wing really low to the water that's where it's efficient i can really get a good angle on on the water but it's also a little bit risky because you know um the you know, chop or whatever can ca catch the wing tip and um you'll see a couple times i actually end up catching the wind wing tip and falling in because of that because i'm trying to be um, super efficient going at a steep angle upwind so you know my intention was to to let derek and eddie go uh, upwind of me a little bit so that i can follow them and get them on camera but they actually got away quite a bit i was hoping to stay a little bit closer to them but um they're already uh, pretty far ahead of me and one, one tip that i find works really well for this run is staying more inside once you get really far outside um, the the water is rougher and it seems like the wind is not as offshore so i find it easier to make progress upwind by staying more inside um, you can also hear i'm catching the wingtip boom falling in so that was my first fall and obviously uh, every time you fall you're going to lose quite a bit of ground so ideally you want to be able to pull off this whole run without falling but um, that didn't happen in this case so um, Derek and Eli uh, Derek and Eddie are getting ahead of me here even more while I'm starting up again but able to quickly get back up on foil that's where it's nice to have that uh, longer narrower board um, you know, I've tried using a downwind stand-up foil board for wing racing uh, in lighter winds and didn't really like it that much. I, I kind of felt like it wasn't working that well for wing foiling. Um, so I designed a board that was um, kind of just a, like an elongated, narrower version of my um, regular board that I use for like wave riding and freestyle. So it still um, handles quite well. And but it just really gets going easily. It just takes a few pumps and has really good glide and it's e makes it easy to go get up on foil. So another advantage of staying more on the inside 
is that the waves kind of um, help push you into the wind. So you can get on a, on a wave uh, coming in and, and take a really steep angle into the wind. Here you can see um, Eddie and Derek quite, a, quite far ahead of me. Um, and they're also doing that, that kind of staying more on the inside, not getting too far out. That way you also catch the, like the gusts coming out of the valleys, um, blowing at a nice offshore angle and a little bit smoother water on the inside, which allows you to, to really get a steep angle into the wind. Um, and then so Derek's definitely taking advantage of that. De Derek was able to get a really steep angle into the wind. And, uh, but I'm, it seems like I'm kind of catching up to Eddie a little bit. So, but yeah, um, it's a little bit tricky, you know, to zigzag back and forth and obviously also risking falling in if you're, if you're always zigzagging. But I find that uh, this kind of coming in and getting on a little bump or a wave and then just really turning into the wind, using the wave energy to kind of push me upwind and uh, almost less of the wing. Um, sometimes you can almost depower the wing and just ride the wave upwind. So just you want to make sure you kind of find a little bump and stay on the top of it, especially if the waves, um, if there's a little bit of a south swell and the waves are a little bit bigger, the closer you are to shore, the more energy that wave is going to have to push you upwind. But you also want to be careful because the inside does get shallow. So it's good to kind of know uh, where the reef is or just keep an eye out for where it looks um, more shallow if you can see the bottom and it looks like there's waves breaking on the inside you don't want to milk it all the way to the end better to to um, turn out of it before you get into the breaking waves obviously and definitely don't want to get caught on the shallow reef and get stuck with your foil on the reef and having to paddle back out into deeper water but um I usually like to kind of zigzag back and forth um, on the inside until I get to um, Toes, which is a beach park where you'll sometimes see windsurfers out there, uh, Kawai Nui Beach Park. Um, and then from there, I find that the wind is really offshore, so um, I can almost take a direct angle to like um, pillars or China walls from there. So, and I'll show my GPS track later so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. But there's Derek. We're both heading out and then heading back in. <clears throat> this uh, here, I think I'm getting pretty close to toes or <clears throat> still a little bit up, um, downwind of toes. Um, and like I said, yeah, I, I do try to um, ride the waves into the wind, but also not get too close to that where it gets real shallow. Uh, so when you see the waves breaking, that means it's probably getting pretty shallow on the inside there and you want to turn out of the waves before you get there. You know, other people's strategy is just to do a long, uh, long run all the way out and then come all the way back in. So, um, but yeah, I've, I just found like, the outside sometimes it is just harder to make progress and that's not as quick as um, doing the zigzag on the inside staying inside on those um, on those little waves and a little bit smoother water so um, at this point uh, Eddie and Derek are still ahead of me yeah there's <clears throat> there's Eddie and um, he was doing really well too, um, staying upwind. And you know, the, the foil equipment choice is obviously super important. You know, this was a little bit lighter wind day, so it was good for me to have that seven meter wing. But sometimes if you're overpowered and have too much power in the wing, obviously then you have challenging cha challenges with control. And then also, you know, a bigger wing, it creates more drag. So, uh, you know, if it's stronger, definitely good to go with a little bit smaller wing. So you have less drag into the wind. Uh, but then also you want to keep in mind that coming back downwind, um, you're going to have, uh, you know, less power in the wing. So when you're going downwind, it's good to have a bigger wing. When you're going upwind, sometimes uh, it's good to have a, 
a little bit smaller wing so you want to have a, a something that works for both and then the foil you know if you have a smaller faster foil like in my case i'm using a that mike's lab 600 which is a fast foil but you also have to maintain a certain amount of speed so going upwind is always kind of a game where you where you try to go upwind as steep as you can without losing too much speed so you're kind of trying to push push the angle into the wind as as hard as you can without slowing down too much when once you start slowing down noticeably down then you have to kind of turn um, a little bit away from the wind again just to maintain that speed so having a, a slightly bigger foil helps with um, going upwind at a steeper angle um, because just because it flies better at lower speeds but um, yeah here you can see there's kind of a little bit of a bump in the water that I'm following and just kind of riding the top of the bump going into the wind oh here I'm almost catch the board the board kind of touches down but pops up easily again and then I decide to turn back out and uh, head back out again now here this is uh, where I'm approaching toes that's the name of the spot there's some surfers on the inside there's a windsurfer on the outside so this is um, the spot toes which I would say it's probably a little bit more than halfway um, towards the blinker buoy so uh, once you pass the spot from here I find that the wind has like a more offshore angle so I'm really able to kind of um, get a good angle into the wind and and point straight towards like china walls or um, almost towards the blinker buoy in, in a straight line so after this spot i usually just go straight without um, doing any more uh, tacks I'd, i stay a little bit more on the outside now um, derek is ahead of me you can kind of see him there he's uh he's staying more inside so he um he's going back in to to stay more on the inside which is probably a good strategy as well um, but I was able to kind of get a nice angle and, and have some nice speed on this on this run so I kind of um, made up some ground to Derek um, but um, so I'm, I'm not sure which after after toes I think just going straight line to when till till you get close to the blinker buoy is probably a good strategy um, you don't really want to be outside past um, china walls or port lock point because um, once you get too far out then the wind there's kind of a wind shadow there uh, behind behind coco crater but um, as long as you kind of stay more on the inside there's like a nice strong offshore breeze so i'm just kind of trying to angle steep into the wind as steep as i can and uh and just maintain a nice amount of speed look for the gusts on the water uh, in the stronger gusts it's easier to to have a steeper angle in the, into the wind sometimes when the wind gets a little bit lighter you have to kind of back off a little bit so like i was saying i'm um, getting the wing kind of low to the water is the most efficient but like here sometimes the wing tip can touch so it's always like um, a game of um, between being as efficient as possible but still making sure you don't drag the wingtip or um, have the wingtip touching um, yeah so um, but definitely getting the wing lower to the water uh, you just have more power and and use the wind more efficiently and you can g get a steeper angle into the wind uh, managing managing it that way so here I'm get, kind of getting closer to um, China walls. It's hard, kind of hard to see the um, the distances here, but I feel like I'm, I'm can, uh, already close enough to the blinker buoy now to tack and then try to make it to the blinker buoy in, in uh, one more tack. I think I might have turned a little bit too early, and I'm trying to uh, go up one as steep as I can to try to make it to the blinker buoy, but it's still... I, I, I just um, should have gone a little bit further so a good place to go is kind of pillars there's some um, pillars in the water close to um, a little bit uh, upwind of China walls um, if you if you tack close to those pillars um, you can make it to the blinker buoy pretty easily if you tack a little bit too early like I did then it's going to be challenging to make it 
um, straight to the blinker buoy. But I also saw Derek coming. Derek was more on the inside line, so he was heading straight straight towards the blinker buoy. Um, but I, I, th I felt like, yeah, I had a little bit of a lead on him, so I thought um, I could make it to the buoy before Derek. But then, uh, yeah, just on, on the way to the blinker buoy, there, there's the blinker buoy, and I'm still trying to go up when it's at a steep angle, trying to get to that blinker buoy. Uh, meanwhile, I saw Derek approaching it uh, more on the inside and lost my focus for a moment and just wingtip dragged and turned the wing and I was still hooked into the harness and went in. So yeah, using a harness, um, going upwind is definitely a big advantage because you can just um, generate more power by um, by just having your body weight um, control the power of the wing a little bit more and not having to use your arms as much. Um, so going upwind, I definitely like to use the harness. Um, you do um, have a little bit less control, uh, fine control of it. And there's Derek, um, he's um, on his last tack, getting close to the blinker buoy. And yeah, so that fall kind of cost me the um, getting to the blinker buoy first. So now I'm gonna go upwind on the other tack a little bit to make sure I can get around the blinker buoy tack again. And now I should be able to get around that blinker buoy um, without uh, any more tacks. So that's kind of a good one to practice, kind of figuring out where you have to turn to make it around the blinker buoy. Derek's already around it, so now I'm going to chase him down on that downwind portion. Usually the upwind for me takes about twice as long as the downwind portion. So for me, a good time to the blinker buoy is like um, 24 to 28 minutes, and then going back is like... 12 to 14 minutes so um, that the, that's a, a fast time for me okay and then yeah so once I'm turned around now I'm on the downwind portion and for the downwind I don't use the harness line I just try to um, make like fine adjustments um, the pressure in the wing is not as ho um, strong because you're going with the wind so there's less apparent wind um, and then it's always like kind of a game of getting the steepest angle downwind without losing speed and too much losing too much pressure in the wing so um, that's not Derek there was another winger out there that was um, going back and forth um, and then the, the light the from the setting sun was like kind of right in front of me so it was really hard to, for me to see the texture of the water and I couldn't really see Derek at first either um, but I knew he was ahead of me, so I'm going to try to chase him down. And for me, the, the strategy, the downwind portion, is to kind of use the bumps that kind of come on, this, on the screen from the left to the right, kind of pushing in towards the shore. Sometimes I can kind of turn onto those a little bit for speed and a little bit more pressure in the wing. And then once I have um, more speed, I can turn out of that bump and go more um, downwind, go out, and then try to kind of turn back into the next bump. So it's kind of staying on on top of the bump for a while and then kicking out and trying to maintain that speed into the next one behind it. And um, that's where the Mike's Lab seems to work really well. It just has like the really good glide and low drag where it allows me to kind of maintain the speed to kind of pull out of one wave and then kind of glide into the next one, uh, get a little bit more pressure in the wing again. So for me, it's, it's not just going in a straight line the whole way, but trying to um, use the energy of the ocean, kind of do a little bit of in and out weaving. And yeah, for the, the harness I'm using, it's, it's kind of like a, a prototype one that I mounted the uh, real leash to the back, and then also I have that camera mount, mounted to the to the waist leash, uh, the, the waist harness. Here I see Derek, finally I caught up to Derek. He's uh, a little bit more inside. And um, I think he, he said it was getting pretty light for him. He was hard, having a hard time just maintaining the speed. And he, had, he was like pumping a little bit and so on. Versus for me, 
I don't know for some maybe it's because I had a bigger wing too or something but I was able to kind of maintain a little bit higher speed so I um, uh, at this point I kind of caught up to Derek and then I was actually able to pass him so even though uh, Derek and Eddie were quite a bit ahead of me in the beginning and even though I fell a few times I'm still able to pass Derek so uh, that, that was good but um but definitely um, those two falls co probably cost me a couple minutes on the total time. Two or three falls. Um, every time you fall, you, you lose quite a bit of time and distance. Because, yeah, especially in, in the foiling, you're, you're moving so fast that if you fall in and lose like 30 seconds, um, the, the other guys are going to be quite a bit ahead of you. But, um, yeah, here maybe I'm also a little bit further out, which where there's a little bit more wind maybe i was lucky with a gust or something like that but i was able to um pass derek at this point and then just um, aim as straight downwind as i can so you don't want to have to jibe too many times um go back out but at the same time you also don't want to get too close to the inside and just kind of stay in the in the windy area um where you where you can maintain that high speed um, so, yeah, I mean, one, one thing, if you go in the afternoons or in the evening, you always want to make sure you get back before it gets dark, you know, so if it takes you a long time to go upwind um, and you don't have much time left before it gets dark, you should always just turn around and, and head back before, before it's too late, you know, you don't want to head back in the dark and not see where you're going. So this... Um, here we still we got still got plenty of daylight left, so um, that's good. But you know that's always something to be aware of. You don't want to um, start too late or or end up um, pushing it um, too close to the sunset. So here I'm I'm heading out a little bit again. Um, you know didn't want to come too close to the shore. Um, so but the less you know jibing you have to do, and the more you can do a straight line downwind, the better. So here's kind of sped up a little bit. And then here I'm getting close to that uh, Kahala Hotel, that building, that tall building. There's the Kahala Hotel. That's a good one to orient, orient you, yourself with. And you don't want to get too close to the inside because there is a shallow reef on the inside in front of the Kahala Hotel. So I'm going back out. I came in a little bit too early. Um, and then uh, trying to find that good angle to come in to towards the end. And you don't want to, like I said, the, the shallow reef is kind of straight out from those pylons. So you don't want to come in straight in towards the pylons. You want to kind of come at a diagonal angle, um, um, not too too early because there's a shallow reef on the inside, but not too late either. So now I'm kind of approaching the spot in Kahala where, uh, where there's you know good wave riding too if there's a little bit of a swell. Um, you know, it's usually not not big waves, but some some smaller waves. So to the left of that, the hotel building, you'll see kind of the bridge, and then out sticking out from that um, bridge, the um, you can see the pylons now. So I can see the pylons, and that last pylon is where the finish line is going to be. And uh, this is kind of a good angle. You want to kind of di head diagonally toward the towards the pylons. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so just kind of keep a, the good angle towards it. Not if you're heading straight towards the pylons, you got to be careful because there's a shallow reef there. So able to finish, uh, flip the foil upside down. So I don't hit the bottom, stop my timer. And the time I had was 38 minutes. I was trying to show that, but didn't really work. And then here's my GPS track. So going upwind, kind of st trying to stay uh, pretty close to the inside and close to the in the surf zone, doing like zigzags um, in and out. And then once I got to toes, I went straight in, um, towards the blinker buoy. Had to I fell in, did an extra um, tack there, and then hit a top speed coming back in. Total time 38 minutes. Average speed 19 miles an hour. It's pretty good, but I think my best time was uh, 
I want to say 35 or 34 minutes, 34 minutes total, I think. Anyway, but um, yeah, I think that that's if you have if I have no falls and decent wind the whole way, can do it. Um, and, and well, under 40 minutes is a good time, I would say. And then coming back in, it's kind of the same way. Um, follow those pylons back in. Um, you know, if you have a, a, I mean, you can you can also wing in. Um, if you stay to the right of the pylons, there's a little bit of a challenge, uh, a channel. And if you stay high up on your foil, you can wing almost all the way to the sand, which is what I usually do. But just on my nice foil, my mic slab, I don't want to risk um, getting any scratches on it. Um, so I'm always super careful with that mass. So I just walk it in from there. And then, yeah, the nice thing about Kahala, there's a, little, uh, there's a shower. Um, you know, and it's easy to clean up your gear, dry off your gear. And um, uh, over here on the left side of the bridge is where we're going to have our um, award ceremony and barbecue and have a little, a little party for everyone after after we do the race. So really looking forward to that. I hope some of the neighbor island wing fillers can come over for this uh, event. Uh, and just to let us know if you need help with anything. I'd be stoked to um, host lots of wingers from all over the islands and make it a real state championship. If it's only us guys from Oahu, then it's uh, it's not really legitimately a state championship race. But hoping to get some of the top guys. I think Alan Cadiz from Maui said he he's going to try to come, and also the Spencer brothers. I invited them. Hopefully they can come. So if they if all of them can come, it'll be definitely a good, challenging, interesting race. And then yeah, afterwards it's cleaning up, cleaning up the wings, and getting ready for another day of wing foiling the next day. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I hope it's helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And as always, subscribe to the Blue Planet Surf YouTube channel if you're not a subscriber. And get out there, have fun, enjoy the, the water. And yeah, hope hope this was helpful. You know, I like I definitely like just getting out in the water to freestyle wing foil and all that, but racing can be a good way to challenge yourself and uh, and kind of compare compare your speed with others. So it's definitely an exciting way to enjoy wing foiling, but at the same time, you know, it's it's uh, I totally understand people that don't want to do the racing and just want to get out and have fun. But yeah, racing is a good way also just to do something with others and kind of a social thing. And afterwards, uh, after the race, we're gonna have a little party, so it'll be a great uh, great place to talk to other wing foilers, like minded people, and just enjoy enjoy the scene so yeah so hopefully this is uh, all gonna come together and uh, winds probably gonna be kind of similar to this day like i think the forecast right now is like um, between 12 and 18 knots so um, not super windy but enough wind to foil the whole way so yeah so that's it Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the water. Aloha.